back benches i hope everything is going well with you all and i hope you all are fine from today onwards we are going to be beginning with a brand new chapter of transpiration under the playlist of plant physiology we have already finished absorption by roots a portion in the previous video we have uploaded the pdf in the description box the pdf contains a lot of useful and important questions so make sure that you definitely go through the question once let us quickly look into the chapter division for transpiration first lesson which is lesson 1 contains two parts part 1 and part 2 today's video is on part 1 and part 1 in part in part 1 we are going to be discussing about introduction and types of transpiration that is going to be a very short discussion uh, on part 1 in today's video and in part 2 we are going to be having a detailed discussion of stomatal transpiration in part 1 as well i'm going to give you a brief idea of what is stomatal transpiration but the mechanism of guard cells the opening and closing of stomata everything is going to be discussed in the part 2 so let us quickly okay let us discuss the rest of the parts as well lesson 2 is going to have cuticular and lenticular lenticular transpiration discussion adaptations are there lesson 3 is going to have factors affecting transpiration it's a it's not going to be a very big video uh lesson 4 is going to have significance of transpiration lesson 5 again has part 1 and part 2 since this chapter contains a lot of experiments i think there are total 8 to 9 experiments on transpiration so i have divided the experiments as a whole into two equal parts we will slowly slowly uh, read the experiments and then at last we have doubt class you all know what is doubt class whatever doubts you have please write to the write the doubts in the comment section do not hesitate at the end of finishing this chapter we will discuss your doubts in that particular doubt video so please make sure whatever doubts you having you keep writing them in the comment section okay let us begin with today's portion we have transpiration this is the most basic and most easy diagram that i could find for you all see in this diagram there is a small uh, well watered plant and this whole diagram shows transpiration very well transpiration is nothing new when we were discussing about absorption by roots in that chapter only we discussed about what is transpiration it is basically the removal of water the removal of water but in the form of water vapor so when water comes out of plants in the form of water vapor that process is known as transpiration we all know plants absorb water from the soil there are four processes by which plants do so we have read about those processes in details in the previous chapter so the previous chapter and then this chapter both of them are very much linked together so after finishing absorption by roots the best thing to do is to read transpiration because it gives you a clear idea of the processes taking place here see in this diagram if we look what is happening in this diagram is basically they are absorbing water see ab water is being absorbed this is nothing but water okay i'll change the ink color this is water basically and water is being absorbed by plants with the help of root hairs and roots see they are absorbing water but when water is coming out of the leaves water is coming out from the leaves then it is coming out in the form of water vapor this form is of water vapor it is not in the form of water so this is the form of uh, so when water is so what is absorbed by plants we can see it is a daily process happening and plants absorb water also water is also lost from the plants now when water is lost from the plants it is lost in the form of water vapor or we can say steam water vapor or steam through the leaves leaves have some tiny pores in them which are known as stomata through the stomata these things these uh, transpiration takes place we are going to read about that in details 
you need not worry about that i'm going to discuss every single details regarding every single chapter in my videos so do not worry okay now we if we have to look into the definition of transpiration let us have a look into that what does the definition say uh, the definition says that the method by which plants lose water in the form of water vapor or steam from the aerial parts of the plants is known as transpiration here is here is a new term in this particular definition which is aerial parts so rest of the definition i have said everything i have said everything is same the only different thing in this definition is the aerial parts now what do you mean by aerial parts aerial parts basically refers to the structures of the plant above the ground above the ground whatever we can see in a plant those are referred to as the aerial structure for example in this diagram we can see leaves leaves are the aerial structures then we can see stem stem is the aerial structure there is no fruit but if there was a fruit then the fruit would have been referred to as aerial structure then if the fruit had seeds some plants if you see some plants have seeds only so seeds are also considered as aerial structure inside the leaf these things these things are also aerial structures so any part of the plant which is above the ground which is above the ground constitutes aerial parts of the plant i've already discussed so basically we will consider in this diagram the aerial part to be the leaf this leaf we are going to consider as the aerial part because it is above the ground definitely because it is above the ground so this definition also says that the method by which plants lose water in the form of water vapor or stem or steam from the aerial from the aerial parts of the plants is known as transpiration now is a slight mistake in this word this was supposed to be from let me just write from here okay so the method by which plants lose water in the form of water vapor or steam from the aerial parts of the plants is known as transpiration but the only requirement of transpiration is the water is only lost in the form of water vapor that is a very simple process let's not exaggerate that process any further because it has no rocket science in it nothing at all very simple thing to understand water is being absorbed by the plants through the roots water is being removed uh, from the plants through the aerial parts in the form of water vapor that you need to remember that is only a simple process which is known as transpiration now why is it necessary why is transpiration important for the plant you see when i showed you all the division of the chapter there was already a particular lesson that we are going to have regarding the significance of osmosis significance of transpiration why is it necessary there we are going to be discussing about that point so in this point i'm just going to give you a brief idea why is it necessary first important point of transpiration is it helps to it helps to cool the plant body if you remember while discussing if you remember the discussions of the previous portion previous chapter then i have already given you the example of transpiration in plants sometimes when we sit under plants in a hot sunny day i'm sorry about that okay sometimes when we sit under plants in a hot sunny day we feel cool that is because of transpiration is taking place so it helps to cool the plant body second most important thing is it helps to maintain the level of water in plants level of water in plants that is what uh, that is the necessity of transpiration in plants we are going to be discussing about this point details further in the further portions of the chapter now let us look uh, look into the types of transpiration 
basically there are three types of transpiration first type is stomatal transpiration second type is cuticular transpiration third type is lenticular transpiration lenticular lenticular whatever you like to call it i pre prefer calling it lenticular transpiration in today's video we are going to be having a clear idea of stomatal transpiration that what is this thing and then in the part two we are going to be discussing about the mechanism of the guard cells let us discuss about stomatal transpiration okay this is the diagram of stomata let me write at the top this whole uh, apparatus this whole structure is called stomata okay let me not write it here because i think the labelings i have to mention i'll write this word later first let us look into the structure of stomata first let us name the parts one by one this whole thing is stomata these two arrows are indicating the two guard cells these two arrows are indicating the guard cells this opening this opening is indicate this opening is called stoma the opening of the stomata is called stoma this thing is the nucleus remember stomata is a cell sorry this thing is the nucleus there are two nucleus present here these are the nucleus of the epidermal cells we are going to label them this is the nucleus these structures fan like structures are the epidermal cell generally each stomata consists of three to four epidermal cells so i'll mention that in the bracket three to four per cells this thing i will label it here this thing is the inner thick corner inner thick wall of the guard cell of the guard cell this thing is the vacuole obviously and this thing is the outer thin layer outer thin wall of the guard cell these things are chloroplast so we have labeled every single thing in this diagram now this whole thing this whole apparatus along with the guard cells along with the subsidiary cells along with every single thing that we see in this diagram is known as the stomata So this whole thing is known as the stomata. Now, whenever transpiration takes place through this region, through this area, through the stoma that I'm marking right now, this portion, when water vapor comes out from this portion, that type of transpiration is known as stomatal transpiration. Very simple. Normal transpiration, so you all have a clear idea of now what is normal transpiration. Now, whenever that transpiration takes place through stomatal openings, that type of transpiration is then known as stomatal transpiration. Very simple thing to understand. Let us quickly have a look. See, in this way, water vapor is coming out. So, I will write it here. Water vapor from the stoma. When it comes out, at that time, that transpiration is referred to as stomatal transpiration. When loss of water in the form of water vapor takes place through the opening of stomata is called stomatal transpiration. Very simple uh, thing to understand. Transpiration chapter is a very easy chapter basically. The only thing difficult in this chapter is the experiments that are present. There are a lot of experiments and questions come from the experiment part because the experiments are pretty complicated a lot of new devices are used so i would like to take good care of the experiments that's why i uh, made a separate class on the experiments now i would like to show you all how does stomata looks under microscope 
these two views are the view of stomata under microscope when you all will be having your practical classes in class 11 you will be having a practical in which you have to count the stomatal index of a particular leaf segment that you will be taking so when you will be performing that experiment that practical under microscope you are not going to get diagrams or you're not going to have uh, stomata looking like the one which you always see in your books stomata is always going to look like this that's why i want you guys to get habituated or have a little bit idea of how the stomata would look in real life under microscope this is exactly how a stomata looks you see this particular stomata see there are only two epidermal cells number one cell and okay there are three epidermal cells here in this one then here in this case also there are three epidermal cells only as i said there are only two to three three to four epidermal cells present see this is much more clearer only two epidermal cells are present here this is how the stomata looks these are the guard cells this is the opening which is known as the stoma and then these are the subsidiary subsidiary or epidermal cells another name of epidermal cells is subsidiary cells do not forget that name because both of the name have the same importance when see these dark things indicate that the pores are closed these dark things indicate that the pores are sorry these dark things indicate that the pores are open so these dark things dark structures dark structures okay let me just change write that with a different color of ink otherwise it is looking just not looking good in that diagram okay these dark structures indicate open stomata you don't have to take much stress about these two diagrams i just showed you all because i thought that it would be easier for you or it will be much fun for you to see what actual stomata looks like under microscope and just one more year to go you will be having all these things when you will moving to class 11 you'll have practical classes there that was all about today's video. It was a small video, very simple things that we discussed today. Nothing hard. You all know these things. It's just normal, common sense type of topics. I hope it was a fun session for you all. We will just end our session today. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and share this video with your fellow backbenchers if you have found out this to be useful. Also, Please like and comment your doubts and stay tuned for the upcoming portions. Till then, stay happy, stay safe, take care, peace.